Hello. So I have just a bunch of HTML files that I want to have as a private website and I don't want anybody else to have access to it. So I'm going to show you how I use Tailscale to set that up. And it's really easy. So it's pretty cool. So the main steps that we're going to do are connect to a host via Tailscale, configure the web server so it listens only on the Tailscale IP, for safety, we'll just firewall off everything else. And then finally, we will add TLS using TailScale's built-in certificate um, provisioning. So I'm running this on a FreeBSD host in Google Cloud Platform. Uh, the machine that you use might be a little bit different. That's OK. The same general techniques and principles are going to be the same. So we'll start off by installing Tailscale, and I already have my host set up, and we enable it, enable it, and start it. It's called Tailscale D as the service. And then we Tailscale up. And that will give an authentication URL that I visit and I'll authenticate. And now we should see Tailscale IP address for this machine. So now I want to set up a web server that I can access. And so first, I'm going to make a folder where the documents are going to go, and then a little home page. And I'll go back to root, and I'm just going to copy stuff so I don't screw up the typing. So install Nginx, enable it. I need to change the root because it, by default, it serves from user local ww nginx, and I want to serve this root directory from my home web directory. So we will inline edit the nginx config file, and then start nginx. And now my public IP is over here. I should be able to access it. Oh, HTTPS. All right. So it's running on port 80. And so we see we can access it publicly. But I don't want that. I want it to be private. So there's a couple ways to do this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to have a firewall running. So I'm going to use the built in FreeBSC firewall called PF for packet filter. And I'm going to configure it so that the host is only accepting requests on port 80 on the Tailscale interface. So we'll start off by switching to SH to write this file because I don't, don't know how to write a here doc in CSH, which is the default root shell. And we'll write that out to PF conf. And you see this is the main thing is we define a tail scale interface and then we pass in traffic on port 80 only on the tail scale interface. If you do this, it's very, very important that your external interface be the right thing. So in GCP, the main interface is this VTNet0. Um, if you have a different system and you're using FreeBSD and PF, then you need to pick the right interface, otherwise you will lock yourself out. So now we will start it, and this is going to kick me out. So I can't type anything here, but that's okay. It might take a second to get the to be able to connect over tail scale, but I should be able to.
Yeah, I've seen this happen before, and I'm not quite sure what's up. But if I log in on the main IP, then usually I'm able to get in right after. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes it just takes a few minutes um, when doing some tail scale stuff. So admittedly, I'm not sure why that took long, but I just waited and it went through. So here on this side, I'm logged in with I'm SSH'd over the main IP, and then on this one, I'm SSH'd over uh, tail scale. So now we have a firewall in place. But I can still see that Nginx is listening on every interface. And so if I were to mess up the firewall, if I bring the firewall down or I just get some rules wrong, then it's still going to be exposed over public internet, which I do not want. So we can configure Nginx to listen only on the tail scale IP. And so again, we're going to modify the nginx config and here instead of listening on port 80 everywhere it's going to listen only on our tail scale IP on port 80 and reload the config and again check SOGSTAT to see what's running and we see now it's running only on tail scale port 80 so this point I'll close this tab to show that it's not connecting. Um, it's really not connecting because the firewall is not letting it connect. But even if the firewall allowed port 80 through, uh, Nginx would not be listening on that other interface. So it's uh, I can connect via my tail scale network now though that's the whole point so I'll go on my tail scale domain and you'll see that I have a HTTP connection over tail scale to my website so it's unlikely that somebody's gonna <laughs> do a man in the middle attack on my uh, private website here but we can set up HTTPS because tail scale will configure Let's Encrypt certs for us really, really easily. So we will make a directory for those certificates and then tell Tailscale to create certificates. And we have to pass in the host name. I'm not sure why you have to do this, frankly, because this knows the host name, but they make you do it. So this doesn't usually take very long, maybe 10 to 30 seconds or so. And my understanding is Tailscale is creating a DNS entry for this host name and then calling Let's Encrypt to verify that host name. And then they send us back the certificates and write it out to this file. So now we have some Let's Encrypt certificates and we can configure Nginx to point to those certificates and listen with SSL instead of plain HTTPS. So if we go to our listen configuration, see that we edited that, so we want to change it to run on 443 and run with SSL. Change the host name to be host name we're listening on. And then now we need to point the SSL certificate. And that should be good. So now Nginx is going to listen on 443, but our firewall is still blocking that. 
So we want to change the firewall to point to allow 443 instead of 80. We will reload Nginx and reload PF. And now, if I go to HTTP, this should time out because the firewall is blocking out on 80 and Nginx isn't listening on 80 anymore either. But if I change it to HTTPS, it now goes to my private website. So that probably took a, long, a little longer than five minutes to record, but the steps are pretty simple. And in just a few minutes, we can create a totally private web server running on any machine that we want. It could run on a machine at home. It could run on AWS, GCP, Vulture, you know, anywhere. And it's accessible only to people on my tailnet, only on machines that I permit on my tailnet. And I know that I'm talking to one of my tailnet machines uh, because of this TLS host verification. So that's it. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Thanks.